Welcome, I'm Sid Maestri, Head of Developer Evangelism at Xero, and today I'm going to walk you through how to get up and running with Xero's Java SDK using a little starter project we've made available on GitHub. To start, just navigate over to GitHub to the Xero API handle and find the Xero Java OAuth2 starter project. From here, you can either clone or download this project. I'm going to go ahead and download it. And for today's tutorial, I'll be using Visual Studio Code and Apache Tomcat as my Java server. And I'll also be using Maven to manage the dependencies and to build this project for deploying to Tomcat. So. I head over here, I've got Visual Studio Code up and running, I've got an empty project, and if I go to my download folder, I can unzip the project, and I can drag and drop it here into Visual Studio Code. Now the structure of the project is that I've got a Java folder here with the package com.0.0. .starter. And inside of this package, I have five Java files. That's all I need for this starter project. And I also have a pom.xml file, which is how we define our dependencies for Maven. In this case, I am using the Zero Java SDK version 4.0.1, but you might be using a different version in the future. All right. Um, I also want to mention that in VS Code, there is a marketplace of extensions where you can go and find very helpful extensions developed for you. Uh, if you search for Java, you'll find that there is a Java extension pack, which I've found very useful. Uh, and importantly, there's also a Tomcat uh, server uh, extension as well, which I've installed. And when I go back to look at my files, we have some other panels here, including this Java, this Tomcat server. Now, installing the Marketplace plugin doesn't actually install Tomcat on your machine, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. To get a copy of Tomcat running locally, you'll want to head over to tomcat.apache.org, find the version that you want to install, and go ahead and download and install that. Uh, I'm using Tomcat 9. Again, you might use a different uh, Java server or a different version of Tomcat. Just remember when you install it, you're going to need to know what directory path it's installed in because you'll need to actually um, point to that from VS Code. Um, I installed mine in user forward slash local. And so if I go to my terminal and I change into uh, user local and I list what I have in there. I have both Apache Tomcat 8 and 9. Um, to make things easy on myself, I actually created a little shortcut to Tomcat 9 right here. So to add that in VS Code, I just click the plus sign. I click on Tomcat and this is Tom, you know, it says here Apache Tomcat 9.0.35, and I go ahead and select that. Now, to actually run my code, I will need a client ID and secret. These are my API keys, and I get those from zero. So let's head back to our GitHub repository. And if we scroll down, we actually have the steps that you need to follow to obtain your API keys from zero. You'll need first a free zero user account. Anyone can create one. It never expires. You don't have to pay for that user account. And every user account has a demo company attached to it. Um, so if you head over to developer.zero.com and you click get started, it'll have all the links you need to set up that free account and log in. Once you log in, you click on my apps. And I've already logged in, so it's just gonna not going to prompt me to log in again. And I'm going to click on New App. I'm going to call this my Java Starter App number six. I'll give it a name for my company, a privacy policy URL, 
and importantly, we need to set our redirect URI um, based on the IDE I'm running and how I've configured my system. I'm going to run on port 8080, and the path is going to be starter forward slash callback. So if yours is different, you need to make sure you set that to match here. And I'm going to agree and click create the app. Now that I've created my app, I can see I have a client ID, uh, but I also need to generate a secret, so let's do that. Before I hit the save button, I do need to copy these values because the client secret will be locked away and I won't get access to it again and I'll have to regenerate it after I hit save if I don't copy it now. So let's copy that client ID, go back to VS Code. I'm going to open authorization.java And in here, I'll see I have a little placeholder for my client ID. I'll paste that and save. And I'm going to copy the client secret. And I'm going to paste that and then save. You'll see my redirect URI matches what I set at um, under my apps at zero. I'll copy the client ID and secret. And there's two other places I need to update this. I'll update it in the callback, and I will update it in the token refresh. Of course, you'll want to store your credentials somewhere safely. Uh, that's going to really vary based on the environment you're running your code, whether it's local or in a production environment. So just make sure you put these keys somewhere safe and secure. But this is just a local uh, bit of code we're running to understand how the OAuth flow works. So this is good enough. Now, the next thing we'll want to do is we actually want to build our project. So I'll go to the terminal and I'll say new terminal. And let's just check what version of Maven I'm running. So if I type Maven version, I can see that I'm running Apache Maven 3.6.3. .3. I'm running Java version 1.8. So that all looks good. So let's do a Maven clean install. All right, the build was successful. Let's go into the target directory and find our war file. It's going to be called starter.war. And if I right click or control click on that file, I'll see I have a couple options at the bottom, run on Tomcat server. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll see Tomcat will start up and turn green down here. And if I click the little uh, arrow, I can see my starter project is available. Again, right click or control click and say open in the browser. And my zero Java starter app has launched. Let's click on connect to zero. It's now redirecting me over to zero. If I haven't logged in, I'll need to log in at that point and then select which company I wanna to connect to. I only have one company, it's the demo company. So I'll just say allow access. So the redirect was complete. And if I come back to VS Code, you can see that we have some output messages here. How many contacts did we find? 49, a uh, new um, account was created. Um, I read the accounts that are of type bank. I found two. The first one is called checking account. I updated an account description. I deleted an account. And how many invoices have I modified in the last 24 hours? The answer is zero. So let's take a look at the code that made all of this possible. So first of all, we have our authorization code where we set our uh, client ID and secret there at the top. Importantly here, I define the scopes. So the scopes are what you need to let the user know what am I getting access to. So I'm getting access to their open ID, email, and profile. So those are going to be sort of the defaults that you need. Offline access allows me to refresh my tokens. If I don't include that scope, I won't get a refresh token back. And then we have some different accounting endpoints that we want to access. Invoices falls under transactions, contacts obviously fall under contacts, 
Um, the organization name falls under settings. So you can choose which scopes are right for your app. And then I'm creating an authorization flow. And from that flow, I'm getting a new URL built using my client ID, my scopes, and my secret state. And then I'm redirecting uh, and building a redirect URI, which I'm passing in here and redirecting the user. So that's the authorization flow. Next is the callback. So when I come to this callback route here, I'm then executing this block of code where I'm again um, doing the flow, the authorization flow. Um, I'm doing, I'm building that out. And importantly, into the flow, I'm passing in the code that gets returned back to me from zero. And that code is then exchanged for an access token. So that's how we complete the flow and I get a token response. Uh, with that token response, I can use the get access token um, method and then I can actually make an API call. Now, before I start accessing any data, I need to know the tenant ID that I'm connected to. So to get that tenant ID, that's the same as sort of your organizational, uh, your org ID, it's like your identifier for when you make API calls with OAuth2. I call the, I create the identity client. I um, initialize it with the default identity client here. And from that, I call get connections and I pass it an access token. And when I do that, I get back a connection um, list and I go and I grab the first tenant ID from that list. Now you can authorize more than one organization and you can get an array of connect, uh, array of tenant IDs, but in this case, I'm just connecting to the demo company. So I know it's the array will only have one object in it. And therefore I just grab the first one and get the tenant ID from there. I also get back, you know, the access token, the refresh token, and I just save all of that in this token storage class, which is just uh, a way to save the cookie, save your um, data in a cookie. It's not really production ready. I wouldn't use that code for a production application, but it's fine for this demo. And then lastly, I send you over to the authenticated resource um, route. So this is the third and final route that we take and it brings us here and what we do is we go and we pull those tokens out either access token refresh token or the tenant id we pull that out of the cookie and then we use it and we check is this token still fresh if it's not we refresh it and then we create an instance of the api client we pass that in to our accounting api and with that accounting API class, we can then start calling methods like get contacts. The first two arguments are gonna be the access token and the tenant ID, and then any additional parameters. So we call get tokens, we create a new account object, and we set some values there, and then we call the create account method, and we pass in that account object. So that's what we're gonna create. We can also pass in some of those optional parameters like a where clause. So here I'm saying, get me all the accounts that are, have a status of active and are of type bank. You can see here, I pass in the where clause, that optional parameter. I also have the option to get a very specific account by passing in an ID. So instead of get accounts, I call the get account method, which just accepts one parameter uh, after the access token and tenant ID, which is my account ID. I have the option to update an account. So again, if I have an, uh, an account ID, I can set the description in this case, and I can pass that in as parameters, the account ID and that new account object that I've modified. And I can also delete an account and lastly, I can use the if modified sense uh, parameter where I'm saying go back one day and just tell me what are the invoices that have changed in the last 24 hours. And that's an optional parameter right here. So 
that's really all it is for up and running with our starter project. I hope you found this um, tutorial helpful. Uh, if you like it, subscribe to our channel, uh, give it a like, uh, leave us some comments, tell us what's, what else you'd like to hear from us as far as developer content and tutorials, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.